Yo, yo, what up guys? Got another package here. Still waiting on another one to show up. Um, I think, I don't think, yeah, there's no way it's in here. But uh, I'm waiting on this one since they announced these. Um, nothing big. The next, the next part, well, I guess I can talk about it because it's in the title. Uh, this damn oil cap. Then we got the uh, ball joints coming soon. As soon as they're here, we'll do this all in one video. We'll, we'll unbox and install, get everything on. Hopefully they show up before autocross, so. From what I heard, that the ball joints are already on back order, but hopefully my order was in soon enough. We're forever right at the, at the forefront of performance automotive. Our products are created in the world's toughest, toughest development labs. Motorsport. We push the limits and reach new heights on track, then refine our products to give you perf the performance you deserve whenever you need it on the road. That's the racing line difference. So, a nice fancy box here, more foam, and a nice cap. Now I got all the caps that racing line offers besides the coolant cap because I like the, the Porsche one, or R8, whatever it is. So guys, so you know there's all the oil cap, and I have to show you guys in the garage, but it's actually printed upside down. So I'm gonna have to get another cap. It's no one's fault, really. It's not a huge deal, but we got a nice box here. You guys know the title. We got the ball joints. So let's open these up. We will for sure be the first 8Y Audi with uh, these ball joints. And one of the very first, I'm sure, in general, that have these. I heard they got sold out pretty quick, so I'm going to try and get them installed quick. Of course, we got a sticker from the boys, a little card. Mind you guys, I love 034 Motorsport. We got their end links on the car, got their rear sway bar. Um, we're going to order off their camber plates, their rear shock mounts, their um, brake rotors when they come out, and whatever else. Lots of things. Love OG 34 has been a big supporter of them for a very long time. Uh, apparently you can get cancer from these in California. That's nice to know. Good thing we don't live there. Let's get these bad boys open. I'm excited. So these add, I think it says 1.2 degrees of camber and it helps fix the uh, roll center when you lower your car. So it's a pretty simple thing. It's four bolts. Boom. So we'll undo this part from the knuckle, knock that out, do this, undo these from the uh, control arm, push this baby on in, tighten it down, tighten these down, and that's that. It's pretty, pretty simple, and they're labeled left and right. You even get in here, you see uh, who inspected the box and made your order for you, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and that's about it. I might uh, pull up the website here read off a few things for you guys about these and what they do but there'll be a link down below um, and you can read all that for yourself but basically when you lower a car it puts um, some other parts of the suspension geometry out of whack and these help fix that and it should and with the the camber added to that it'll help um, you in the corners which it'll already do from fixing the roll center so um, this will be a really good mod, especially with autocross coming up in just a couple weeks. Uh, very excited. Very, very excited. And then after that event, we will order up the camera plates for the front. Um, they're static. I think they add another 1.4 or 1.6. So we should be sitting about negative, around negative 3 degrees up front between these two mods. And then uh, we're going to put all the Berkline stuff in too, dial the rear end in. And then, uh, yeah, the car's going to be pretty set suspension-wise. You need to get a DCC controller when they come out. That's just going to be the plan for now. I'm not going to grab coilovers. So I'm going to stick with the springs on the one, do these other mods, and it should be pretty nice. Um, especially with how quick the current suspension, like with the, with the electronics and how it works and the shocks, like it should be really, really good. And you can tune it yourself. So I'll be able to go in with the computer and do, like, rebound and, and all that stuff it'll be 
it's a whole different thing for a whole nother video. We're not gonna get too deep into that, but let's put this stuff down. And uh, I'm actually not doing this till tomorrow or the next day, but. Uh... All right, guys, next day, I'm out here in the garage. Already got one side done. Took me maybe 30 or so minutes. It wasn't too bad. Um, now, if your car is a little rusty or something, you might need to do additional steps in this. You might have to pop your axle out and the, uh, what you might call it, uh, steering rack, the end link. Well, I can't even think. Tie rod. You might need to take off your tie rod. But if you guys a quick look here, boom, they're in down there. I broke this nut loose. I turned the steering wheel, broke this loose. And then uh, turn the steering wheel back. I got a pickle fork, jammed it in between here, gave it a couple hits, it popped out. Undid these three, pulled the unit out, pulled the unit in, and tightened everything down. Pretty simple stuff. I'll show you guys here. Um, just go over it. Uh, what did I use? So, if you need to take off your axle, you'll need a 24 mil, like this, to get your, your axle nut off. And you'll need, I believe, a 21 for your tie rod. Might not be correct on that. And this is all the rest of the stuff I used. There's a 15 and a 16 to get the nuts off the bottom of the ball joint. And then the new ones are 15. 18 mil for the nut that's on the knuckle itself for the ball joint. And then the pickle fork I used, I just kind of jammed it in there. Gave it a couple taps with a hammer. She popped right out. A 10 mil for the level sensor on the control arm since I had to really push the control arm down. Uh, just undid the, the sensor bracket so it would fall down. All right guys, I'm gonna do my best job to show you how to get this done. One thing I can tell you is I love having studs on the car. First things first, we're gonna turn the wheel all the way to the right so we can get to this 18 mil right here. Sorry if it's blurry. Hop up in the car. Man, I love the way this car looks. Can't wait for my steering wheel to show up. It's my least favorite thing about this whole car. Whoop, key's not close enough. Turn it all the way to the right. All right. Next up, right here. Let's break this bad boy loose. No. There we go. Hopefully, now if your ball joint, you can look in there and see if it's spinning. If the whole thing is spinning, you will have to stick a T45 in the top of that and then continue to uh, get the nut loose. And you're not going to be able to do that with the axle in. So you're going to have to take the axle out if um, your whole bowl joint is spinning. It kind of sucks, but this is a pretty new car. So I got lucky. Get the nut off. Now I just went in the car and turned the wheel the opposite way because you want to go through the back side to wedge. You can get this thing a Harbor Freight for like $12. It's cheap, it works, and if you break it, uh, you won't be too upset. So down in here, I'm going to try and show you guys, there's like, yeah, you got that spot right there where they meet. I'm going to stick this right in there and hit it once or twice and it's going to pop right out. There's no good way to get the camera in there by myself to show you. But uh, if you use your brain, I promise you can get this done. Pop that in. Right about there. Almost. Boom, heard that? She's out. Now we'll loosen the 316 mils at the bottom. Here's your 316s. I got a nice uh, ratcheting guy. We'll break it loose. Now, depending on your car, you may or may not have these sensors, okay? I have a level sensor here. It goes down to the control arm, and I would wind up overextending it and breaking it. So there's a little 10 mil right there. We're gonna pop that out. And then we can pull you can just push on the arm down and pull this out. So, I just took the pickle fork, pried up in here a little bit. And this goes down, everything should just fall right out. There's where it came out of, that's where it went into. 
and she's out. Oh, it even has an R on it for right. That's nice. I was putting it back in there, proper boxes. All right, guys, here we go. We got a side by side. You can see that this one is significantly taller, and obviously the angle is going to be uh, quite a bit different since it adds camber. This one's kind of turned; it's not standing up. So you can see here, kind of how much more camber that back one would give due to the angles, and it's longer. It's much longer. So this one is going to sit lower, which brings your control arm down. And that's going to help correct your roll center. Very nice. It's a really nice piece. And now that this is the geometry of this is a little bit different than this. It makes it a little bit difficult to get it back in. But uh, after fiddling around for a little bit on the other side, because I was trying to do it with the steering wheel still turned. So you want to put the steering wheel back to neutral. And then uh, this should just fall right in. And I put, I put this part into the knuckle first and got these on a couple threads. Then I pushed the control arm down, popped these in, screwed these on hand tight, and then I tighten this down, then I tighten these down. I'll do my best here to give you guys a decent angle of getting this in. The top nut ready. Slide that in. This nut on, which isn't easy with these bulky gloves. Oh, almost. There we go. A couple threads there. And as far as I can, I guess. Okay. Now we'll push this arm down. Or as we can, slide these up and over. Angle it a little. Okay, almost there. The new joint is just so stiff. Hard to get the, the angle right for these to just fall right in. There we go. Boom. She's in. Now we're just snugging up this top 18 mil. Get there. Nice and snug. As much as I can. And again, if it's spinning, you'll have to hold it with a T45. But mine, I can visually seeing it right now. It is not even budging. Goot and tight. Now next up, we'll just snug these bad boys down. All right, put the car on the ground. See how she looks with the new camber added. Oh boy, I'm excited. Probably gotta let the car settle a little bit. Hey, you can definitely tell. And my toe is way off. Holy crap. Unless my steering wheel's turned that much. I'm gonna get in and turn the steering wheel a little bit. I don't know if you guys can tell from here, but toe is way off. That's, I mean, I expected to need an alignment, but that is way out. Holy crap. As you can see, if the other side's turned way in. Nope. Toe is <laughs> way off. Wow, yeah. So we're at the get into the alignment shop as soon as possible holy moly all right so on their website it does say you need an alignment afterwards but it's kind of at the bottom i missed it twice apparently <laughs> um i tried i just backed out of the driveway and the tires were making like odd noise you ever heard like a car with like a what you mean, like a welded diff how the tires are like scrubbing kind of i didn't even make it two houses down i had to turn around come back home so i'm gonna jack the car up Put them back on jack stands and give it a eyeball toe adjustment so I can get an alignment. I'll show you guys here. Like it is towed out bad. Like real bad. Really bad. <laughs> so um, when I get up under there, I'll, I'll show you guys real quick what you gotta do. It's so simple. You undo a lock nut, you turn the tie rod until it's where you want it, 
and then you tighten the lock nut. It's super simple. All right, got the old lady out here with me. Got it about as straight as we think we, we can get it, with it being in the air at least. And go back to this side and see how, how terrible that is. So uh, I'm gonna lay the camera down under here and show you guys what to do. It's very, very simple. So I'm using my biggest wrench, which is a 24 mil to break this loose. Um, the size isn't exact. You hear the, but it's close enough. So I'm gonna break this loose. And then right here, you can fit a 16 mil, and you're just gonna spin this until uh, it's wherever you want it. And then that's how you adjust your toe. It's pretty simple. Since my car's towed out, I need to extend this. So I'm just gonna sit here and turn it until whenever. And then at the end, I'm gonna leave this on here Tighten this up and then hold this still while you tighten the nut there because this will still try and spin. It definitely helps to have a spotter, but uh, they look pretty damn straight now, at least while it's in the air. So we'll lower back down, see how she looks, and go from there. All right, I actually wound up adjusting it again once it was on the ground. Um, I think we got it pretty spot on now. I think this one's a little towed out, but it's it's so hard to tell because the bumper like cuts back. So you gotta look at it from the top like this, and it's just I don't know. It should be way, way, way better than what it was a few moments ago. Anyway, um see if you guys can tell the camber from this angle. Yeah, you can definitely tell. Yeah, it looks good. You know what looks even better? That shit right there, boy. Look at that. Mmm! Meaty! Well, hopefully this video wasn't too, too long. What I had planned on doing is tonight, I have like this little area I found, and uh, once everybody gets off work and stuff, this area is completely empty, and it's like a, basically a big circle track for me. I mean, it's on gravel, and it's near kind of like sec secluded business area, but not really. Um, it's a good spot where I can go really mess around, so. Um, I don't know if I'll put that in this video or the next, but I'm gonna go wash up, and uh, we'll just go on our first drive and see what it's like. Recently changed up the screen. I'm thinking I really like this one more. Cannot wait for my steering wheel to get here. I got a flat bottom with like thicker perforated leather here, and it's same kind of leather here white line white stitching black emblems white stitching around that and around this this is black it looks so good they actually messed up and put suede here so now i gotta wait like an extra week for them to put leather back on but um let's get out of here let's see how she does take it up to the beach all right we're cruising can actually drive now it doesn't feel like it's pulling to any side i mean these roads are kind of crap so it's hard to really say for sure but I don't feel it like really pulling looks like it's going straight no weird noises so we'll definitely take it to our little track spot tonight and uh, see how she does the steering feel definitely a little more responsive I'm all right with that definitely like that I need to put it in real sport mode here guys can hear the intake ready yeah it's a bit windy out today put it in dynamic mode tighten up the steering a little bit oh yeah put the windows up because it's windy All right, yeah that feels good sorry it's hard to vlog and drive yeah, it definitely feels sharper yeah love some added camber oh my camera's gonna die soon all right guys before my battery dies there she is Looks good, 
feels really good. We're gonna go tonight and mess around, so stay tuned for that video. I'll try to make it as exciting as possible. Maybe my roommate will watch the baby for a little bit and I'll bring Kaylin with me and she can get some outside clips or something, but we're looking good, feels good. So need to go in for a proper alignment autocross in a couple weeks. But uh, yeah, shout out to 034, shout out to It's Not Stock for getting them here. Very happy camper. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you on the flip flop. Try to end this video twice already. If you're still sticking around, you're the best. Um, went and drove around. There's only there's a couple curvy areas around the house. It's midday though. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. So um, did some reps on it, dude. It feels really good when doing a U-turn. It no longer has like this odd feeling to it whenever you're full lock with some gas on it. Um, some I don't know. It's like 65 mile an hour nice curve into a curve like a, a nice big s basically uh felt really good like really really good better way better than it did before before i can tell you that i do think uh my toe is still a little bit off but the car drives straight whatever has nothing to do with anything ball joints are awesome if you lowered your car get them if you don't understand why you need them go to the website it'll be linked down below read what they do if you still don't understand it just trust me or talk to the other people in the comments about this. Um, a lot of people bought these, so you should see quite a handful of reviews and on the pages and stuff. They're worth it 100%. They're so easy to install. Um, maybe you compare this together. Like I said, I'm gonna get their, um, what we call it, camber plates. And uh, they have a subframe alignment kit as well. There's all these different things you could do all at the same time and then just get an alignment once so you don't have to worry about Getting this part, doing alignment, getting this part, doing alignment. You can buy all the Vo34s, like top notch products at once. Get an alignment, call it done, and you're gonna love it. Um, camera plates are next after autocross, and a whole Verka line rear end going in as well, and uh, rear shock mounts, and rotors when they come out, and brake lines when they come out. So, all types of stuff coming on with Vo34 this season. I love them. This product's great. Customer service, awesome. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to go beat the crap out of the car tonight. It's going to be a good time. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. Fish on the